Pizzica! <laughs> Just, uh, what got me into loving that style of rifle was definitely my Ruger 44 carbine. So I figured I'd throw it out on the table and uh, we take another look at this guy. Um, definitely a uh, contender for uh, one of my favorites, believe it or not. I, that, you wouldn't think so. Seems like kind of like novelty ish, but. Uh, let me tell you something about the 44 uh, Magnum. The 44 Magnum, in my realistic snap caps, by the way, these are totally inert. So if you see me doing something with them that uh, right away, uh, you know, tugs at your safety strings, just uh, take it easy. Keep your underwear on. They're uh, totally inert. They have um, silicone primers. Absolutely no powder in them. And uh, they're excellent for doing drills, like just checking function checks. Because we're going to take a look. This thing has a tube magazine. I'm looking online and I'm seeing rotary magazine. That, that, that these things have a rotary magazine. I'm thinking that later models actually did have the Ruger 1022 style magazine, I'm thinking. But this is an older one. By the way, 1961, they started making these. Same exact gear that the 100 was released. There was a big time back then for these types of, um, you know, semi-automatic, these uh, gas-operated semi-automatic kind of, this kind of setup, this, these interesting kind of uh, hunting rifles. And, um, yeah, so check this out. Here is, uh, here is it next to a uh, Ruger 1022. It's uh, real easy to make that mistake when they're sitting on, uh, you know, a rack at a gun show or on the, the gun store shelf. It really is uh, easy to make that mistake. If I slide them along even at the same, look, they're the same length. I mean, this is this one, even this is the um, standard version of the 1022. Uh, you can see it doesn't have any checkering, checkering or anything like that. No gold bead has the barrel band, um, whereas the, uh, and it doesn't have sling swivels, whereas the, uh, the Deluxe Sporter, the 1022, um, has checkering, there's no barrel band, uh, the sling swivels, but I think that the non-Deluxe Sporter, just the standard version, kind of follows the size of the, uh, of the uh, Ruger 44 a little bit closer. They definitely look uh, almost freaking identical here. You know what I mean? And uh, that rotary magazine I was talking about, they look like this. And when you load them, the rounds go around in a certain, it's like Ruger's thing that they're like, uh, they definitely didn't invent that. I mean, you saw the Savage 99 that we did for crying out of things from the 1800s and had a rotary magazine. But um, this style was Ruger's. Uh, and uh, it allowed for flush magazines, which was, uh, you know, that was a big thing uh, back in the day. Now, while these came out in the same year as the Model 100, 1961, they hung around a little longer. Uh, Model 100s, the Winchester 100s, they kind of started petering out in the early 70s. And um, by the mid '70s, where they were done making them completely, uh, '73 might have been the last time they were officially made. But uh, I think they used up some parts. They some serial numbers ran into this into about '75, uh, just to get rid of what was left over. But they just the these types of rifles just get too expensive to make. These receivers 
are made out of tool steel, for crying out loud. They're forged steel receivers. They are not playing games when they make these things, you know? They might be small, but you can imagine they got to contain a serious explosion there. And uh, these things were built right, you know? So, uh, but the Ruger hung on a little bit longer. They made these about 10 years later, maybe 85, I think, was when the last, the last of these were made. And um, this uh, magazine here, again, these are inert rounds. This uh, tubular magazine, there's a follower there that uh, I saw sticking out when I went to load the first round. It's very easy to load these. There's kind of like there's a button here that releases the slide and also is just like the release for the follower here, for the lifter, I guess you would call it, uh, to load it. Four rounds this thing takes, which is uh, actually... It won't take another, but it's very similar to the Model 100 in that you would have to chamber uh, one to come up with a total of five in the rifle, which was very similar to the Model 100 would load five rounds in the magazine, but the magazine couldn't be inserted into the gun. You had to, like, rack one in uh, on your way in with the magazine, if you remember, if you saw that. This one, it's tubular. You'll load them one at a time, but it'll only take four in the magazine, so... Same capacity. Um, I love the looks of the scope on here. What do I got on this one? I got a nice old, this is a nice period scope too. What is this thing? A All-American 2.5X Perma Center Lyman with some nice Lyman uh, rings here. Nice mount to it. And I'm uh, pretty sure these, these holes that are here, yeah, these are in the rifle to begin with. This one uses the rear sight it looks like the rear sight mount and the uh receiver mount but uh ruger carbine getting some shadows and some shadows working over here shadows in the night there we go that's a little bit better i want to take a look at that because i love how that looks look at that right there ruger carbine 44 magnum now check this out 44 Magnum as an interesting an interesting thing going on. Let's pull up uh, exactly where from uh, receiver to barrel end here. So if we take a look at about night look like a 19 inch 19 inch barrel here, right? So, the comparison between that and, where are we going? Between that and this, six inch or six and a half inch barrel. Now, you know a 44 bag, this is a Model 29, 1973 vintage Smith & Wesson Model 29. Now, with a revolver, there's a lot of losses involved with a revolver here to, uh, to this cartridge. Um, number one is the gap between the cylinder and the uh, barrel in order for the revolver to work. There is a gap there. There's a loss there. Then the transition from... The cylinder to the barrel, there's a forcing cone. That saps a little bit. It's a slow-burning slow pistol uh, powder. And the barrel is this long. And it has that going against it. Compared to a rifle, let's say. And it's still an absolute powerhouse. This thing still, the muzzle energy... The kinetic energy out of the muzzle is incredible. But with the rifle, you don't have any of those three things that are taking away. You don't have any gap here. It is semi-automatic, so you're, the, the, the powder charge is slightly sapped, let's say. A lot of people think semi-automatic it's taken away a lot of the energy uh, to cycle the action. But 
the bullet's long gone already before any of that happens. If this if this was opening up and cycling while the bullet was traveling down the barrel and it was sapping out any of that energy, it would be blasting the brass apart that's coming out and and all kind of gases would be blowing out of the barrel. That's not how they work. Um, there is a slight difference between a locked breech, like a lever or a bolt, and a semi-auto. It is true. There's a little bit. But you got to remember, this bullet's traveling all the way down the barrel to where the gas port is, as if nothing's going on. It's the same as any other, same as a bolt gun. The, the only difference would be if it was a blowback that there might be some kind of movement. Right. But this is, this is a rotating bolt right here. This is locking lugs. This is locked up until something starts pushing the bolt back. And that's not happening until, at least until the bullet passes the gas passage. Once it passes the gas passage, gas starts pushing the piston. And it is true. Might start working, start rotating, you know, a primary extraction might be going on. But it's not really much, because like I said, this can't even start opening. If this starts opening and there's tremendous gas pressure blowing this way, you see that brass that's showing? It's going to blow that brass out. That's thin walled, thin brass case like this. With all that tremendous pressure, no way. It has to dissipate that pressure first with that big blast wave coming out of the barrel. <sighs> Then once that's dissipated, this can even think about starting to, to get, not starting to, but to get serious about opening. I'm sure there's movement, but nothing that really takes away. Um, and then where were we forcing cone? There's no forcing cone. The bullet's already in the barrel. It's just, it's perfectly already set up. And instead of this much distance, we have, you know. 19 inches instead of six. That's almost three times the distance. Um, and from what I'm reading, it's over 60% more muzzle energy from, say, six to 19 or six. I think they might have used 20 inch barrel, but it's about 63% more kinetic energy at the muzzle. If you want to go reading about like feet per second stuff and everything, I mean, there's so many different ammos involved. And I mean, I don't know where they were coming up with these 60% numbers either, if that was across the board. But instead of just quoting numbers on one specific round, I think no matter what, it's 60% more even with light loads, more powerful loads, whatever. You just get a tremendous more muzzle energy. And, uh, I think that means a lot especially for like hunting you really want to know like what kind of muzzle energy I'm not really so much concerned with how fast you can get something to speed along there's all different sizes and weights of bullets but like how much energy can you produce with that and uh it's a tremendous amount this is a deer hunting rifle and uh, let's see if this works i a couple of days ago i was messing around with it and when i went to cycle the snap caps the Magazine pushed all the rounds out. As soon as I opened this, it went and just pushed them all out into my lap. I would never saw that happen before. But I guess it had something to do with the, you know, the cartridge stop, let's say. It would be like, you know, just my shotgun experience. I'd probably get in there and see exactly what it is that's stopping the next round. But let's see what happens. No, we're working now. <laughs> wow. I didn't think it was going to fire it that far. That went clearly across the shop. That was sick. That's some extractor that we got there. But uh, I just wanted to do it. I didn't want to fool around with it because I think a lot of times when you have these misfires, like people might have thought some messed up stuff about the Model 100 because I kind of babied it. Then I realized, oh, yeah, you can't mess around with this. You have to, like, pull it back like you mean it, and you have to let go. You know what I mean? Just like it would do. There's nothing to ride it forward when it's actually working. When you pull the trigger, there's an explosion. Boom! It's pushing this back, the gas, and it's pushing it all the way back. And then it's just falling forward on its own. You can't, if you start getting into trouble when you start riding it like this, you might not even pick up the next round, you know what I mean? See, there you go, perfect example. That's exactly what just happened. So when you're cycling these to check for function, you got to kind of remember to act like, uh, you know, act like the rifle would be acting. Out. There we go. So, uh... 
Yeah, that's uh, that's what I got for you. Here's some video of me shooting it. I love this thing. Um, ammo now is just expensive right across the board. I mean, I realize that, but and 44 Magnum is a is an expensive pistol round, but uh, you know, I think it's uh, I think it's more manageable than you know uh, these like 3006 and 308 now like for hunting hunting bullets you know what i mean like, like 200 200 dollars cents a shot or whatever so uh it comes out to be you know a little bit more cheaper you know let's put it that way and um a lot of fun definitely a lot of fun very totable you know, the size of it is it's the size of a 1023 how cool would that be you know you go out there uh hunting and uh you know your son's got a 1022 over his shoulder and you have this thing or whatever you know if, if i was as a kid i would feel like uh you know on par with my dad mm. you just because it looks the same you know what i mean but um like speaking of which know. um my dad got me this in like uh i don't know what was it 82 something like that uh my first rifle he bought me this. I bought the scope mounts and the scope. Same time, I wanted a scope on it. I wanted a sling. He got me this sling. I still remember the store we were at. He watches my videos. What's up, Dad? Still got the uh, Ruger 1022 Deluxe Sporter. And you see what great condition it's in. I mean, it's got a gouge here and a gouge there, but uh, nothing crazy. Is because my growing up was not in an area where, uh, you know, I could shoot all the time. So uh, it was a, you know, an urban metroplex. So there really was no place to go shoot. It was, uh, you know, few and far between the visits to the range. But uh, we did have fun when we went. And uh, at least, you know, the thing didn't get dogged. But, uh, you know, when I first saw this one, uh, I thought this was damage. But uh, then I took a closer look at it and I'm like, oh, wait, that's just, uh, that's just in the wood interesting looks like a huge gouge down here but uh but it's not a little uh, disclaimer there cross bolt safety you know your regular ruger stuff and like i said you can you just press that button it'll slam closed or you could you know you could ride it closed can we pull the trigger to decock this guy yes we can how cool is that we could ride the hammer down on the uh, back of the bolt so we don't have to uh you know Snap dry fired. Nice, interesting front sight there. That's interesting. Yep. So that's the uh, that's the Ruger forty four. And you know what they make? You know because you're putting these rounds in one behind the other, it can get a little scary if they're pointy. You know what I mean? So for a rifle, it's kind of weird to have to use these flat tipped rounds so that you don't worry about setting one off with the other. Um, these flat tips, you say, well, that really messes up the, you know, rifle usage of the cartridge. But they do make these, Levolution. I got a bunch of these on sale once, and I, I don't even think I had this rifle. I think I just had the, uh, I just had the pistol, and I said, you know what, I don't care. I, it's the cheapest 44 Magnum out there, and usually these are expensive because of the, uh, this point. But um, they were on sale. They were super cheap. And I uh, got a bunch of it. Still have some of it. <laughs> Still have a bunch of it. And uh, it's perfect for this rifle. Just for that reason. So you get... You're not really missing out on anything. You got the pointy bullets now. How are you going to say it's not a true rifle? Just because it's a... What is typically a pistol cartridge? I'm telling you right now, the 44 Magnum is better suited for rifle usage than pistol usage. I said it. Ruger Model 44. I love this thing. It's uh, it's just one of those guns. You know what I mean? It's uh, it's out there. You see them once in a while. They're starting. You know, people are grabbing them up, and they're not putting them up for sale anymore. They're, they 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 are starting to dry up used to be easy to find these but uh, but you still see them out there you see a nice one i suggest uh, you grab it all right took some time there to jump into a 
Gun Geek live chat. Take a little bit of a break. Let's uh, let's do some disassembly. Let's get the light in the right spot. And uh, this is going to be very interesting. This is very reminiscent of the uh, 1100 that uh, we just did. Let's make some room here on the table. Oh, and by the way, if you look up the shit in the dictionary, there's a picture of this, by the way. So that just the other day. Uh, all right, so how do we start? We start with, uh, amazingly... A rifle with a barrel band uh, basically holds the whole entire, entire rifle together. It's like the only screw we have to take out. And once again, with these bits, I matched this already. This is a nice wide screw slot, so you want to make sure you go through your bits. It pays to get a nice uh, gunsmithing uh, screwdriver set so you don't chew up any of these screws. This one doesn't have a single chewed up screw you know just because you don't miss doesn't mean you don't chew up a screw if the screwdriver is not wide enough for the slot you put two little indentations on uh, either side of the screw slot and uh you do that over and over again and the screw looks terrible so i don't lose this i'm gonna Screw it into the barrel band. And I will remember that it was face up on this side. Now, uh, easy enough. It's supposed to be easy enough. When you get this one barrel band off, you're supposed to be able to just uh, lift out the uh, entire Hujimabob without damaging anything. Is that actually going to happen? It's moving. It's supposed to be kind of like a fragile piece of wood, so I don't want to uh, pry too hard. Seems like it's stopping right there for some reason. <laughs> Looked easy enough when I seen everybody else do it. Maybe, uh... Maybe we need to... Push up here a little bit. I'm thinking up and then maybe forward. We're off to a great start. <laughs> That's all I'm getting. That's all I'm getting right there. To here. This thing is really bedded in here strong. Maybe the axe has to be open. Ah, ha, ha. Karma heads prevail. You have to have the action open, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, once again, how familiar is this with the... Uh, listen, somebody was borrowing. I'm not saying a little bit. Somebody was borrowing. What does it say in here? Somewhere. White. Yeah, nothing. Say nothing. But uh, no cracks. Looks good. But once again, this piece stays screwed in. We're going to set this in a safe place. All right. Now what? Once again, the uh, gas operation here. This, uh, for anybody unfamiliar, I'll cover it for just a moment. Uh, as the bullet travels down the barrel after firing, it reaches a point here where there's actually a port here that leads into this area.
Interesting. The piston's in here. Well, anyway, when the bullet passes this spot, gas starts to be introduced into the system right here that operates the action. As the barrel the bullet travels the rest of the way down the barrel, it's creating pressure pushing through here. Then once the once the bullet exits the barrel, there's nothing really pushing pressure down the little hole over here anymore. It's all down this little port. So it's tuned and timed and engineered to be just enough oomph to uh, operate this system. And this system usually has bleeds in place and things like that that will use just as much gas as necessary to operate it. And uh, usually this is what you'll see underneath here is a piston, an arm somehow connected to the bolt, and springs, some type of uh, configuration one way or another. Now, uh, what do we need? So we supposedly now, we take out this one pin right back here. I think that was the one. Was that the one or is this the one? I think it's maybe it's this one. This punch is slightly too big. I'm going to step it down a little bit to this guy. So you want to hold, you want to make sure you hold all this together. When you're taking stuff apart like this and you have springs, you just want to make sure nothing fires across the room. Uh, we got this pin out, and this is supposed to just lift right out. So we got to remember when we put this back in, it's kind of like a in up and forward kind of motion, the way it came out of there. To make sure the follower goes in there, that they go like that. Okay. We'll remember that. So let's take our trigger group out. Let's put that on safe. So just in case the trigger doesn't... Uh, when the trigger gets pulled on these trigger groups when they're out of the rifle could be a problem. So you have to be very careful. Now here's the issue with this captive spring here is that this... Here's the follower. This tube is supposed to lift out. And this spring could shoot off. So here it comes. Nice. That was pretty easy. Now this tube should just lift out. And there it comes. It is slotted. You see that it's slotted in the front. That might matter. That it has to go into a slot, but uh, maybe not. Let's uh, cross that bridge when we come to it, but I just want to remember it was this recess on the face of it was kind of face down like that so we just remember that uh the bolt handle uh oh and i wanted to see exactly where this goes all right the bolt handle is connected to this arm which is it it seems to be riding inside the bolt with the bolt tilted here Facing me with that gap facing me. I can remember that. And this lifts up and out. And the bolt handle comes free. Bolt handle, of course, was in with the slot up. Now, uh, oh, there is one more screw. The screwdriver is too fat for it, so. Kill that screwdriver head right there. I forgot there was another screw. But yeah, this gives us an opportunity for me to show you what I'm talking about. So, if we look into our screw set here, we sure have enough bits. We're doing this guy. Where is it? No, not that guy. Where is it? Yeah, this one. This one right here. So I'd say just by looking at it, we're probably talking about something like that size. Absolutely perfect. See so how when this fits in here, and I put the bit in the slot, 
and I rotate the bit back and forth. It's not clicking. It's not clicking back and forth. Click, 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 click. Like it's got a gap there. It's just perfectly in there. And and this was tight too, so that's where it matters. Definitely gonna go all up the screw head if it didn't fit perfect. It's a hidden screw, but still practice these things all the time. So that was easy enough. It just kind of fit right in that 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 this slot right here. You can't can't miss that. But see that. See that screw head out. It's like a nice, thin, slotted machine screw. You don't want to mess that up. And uh, now that that's out, supposedly, from what I hear, we could rotate the bolt and come back. And with this gap right here, come out. So I guess how to do this bolt, it's simple enough. It's in like that, forward. And then we'd have to rotate it up, right, like that. That's how it was in there. Let me get this out of here. All right, so that uh, that looks pretty good. I could duplicate that to get that back in. Let's get the bolt out. Once again. Okay, yeah, this is a... Uh, this is a dirty, dirty uh, rifle here. I never took this gun apart, by the way. Uh, since I have it, this is so filthy, it'll uh, dirty my table. So I'm gonna put this on a uh, rag here. And yeah, I mean, this receiver is filthy. Let's get a closer look at everything now. Yeah, sure is gummed up in here. So this is the uh, cartridge guide. And you see here the two screws. There are other versions of this gun. You could see the screws here in the top. Supposedly there was confusion over uh, which were the sight scope mount screws and which were, which weren't. And people were taking these out, causing this cartridge guide in here to fall out of there. Um, I don't think that necessarily needs to be taken out of there at all for uh, cleaning. I think we could just clean it with it in there. But uh, later on, they replaced these screws with, like, rivets that were covered over. Um, yeah. All right. Next, we have the piston. That should just fall right out of here. I've seen guys tap the gun backwards to, all right, so that's gonna be a little uh, problematic and I wanna take off the scope. I wanna gun scrub this. And again, look at this, uh, whoops, look at this bit. Look at how fat this bit is base of it to be able to fit into these scope mount screws. Nice and easy. You know, you always feel that you're going to completely ruin the sighting in of the scope when you do this but uh what you know what are you gonna do you have something to do with the range so the reason why i wanted this oh yeah let's get that now the piston there we go and that came out this way it was in like this i want to gun scrub the crap out of this it's the reason why i wanted to take the scope off really get in here and clean it good um this gas block here it uh it has this roll pin in it i'm not even gonna bother taking this out if it was totally crudded up i would but uh spraying this out with gun scrubber giving it a good uh, patch cleaning should be fine 
So uh, I'll be back with you in a bit. I'm just gonna gun scrub this. I'm gonna I'm gonna place these parts in uh, my glass tray. Let me get my glass tray out. I'm not prepared. So uh, this is my glass tray. I use glass because who knows what kind of plastic gun scrubber will destroy or not destroy. It is not going to do anything to glass. And we get all these parts in here. So we go outside. I do this outside because the Millsurf garage is kind of like a Millsurf garage slash den for me. So uh, it will definitely stink in here for a week. If I use gun scrubber in here, um, it'll smell even a little bit just coming back in with wet parts or stuff like that. Even, uh, you know, it's like, I don't even, I just do everything completely outside. Um, so that I don't have to, uh, deal with that. Let's go, uh, look, look at the trigger group too. Terrible. Very dirty. This, uh, this definitely is, is as good as do for a cleaning. Yeah. Nice. We don't want to take it apart and see an absolutely pristine gun, do we? This is what we want to see. Give us something to do. All right. Freaking freezing out. Let's get some of these tools and implements out of here. And uh, let's rock and roll. This is why I like the glass because I know that it's not melting this plastic and then I'm scrubbing it with like half the plastic slime and see the dirt face here. And I know that's cleaning up. Uh, it's just as good. It soaks all inside and everything. Believe it or not, you gotta clean the spring. See it down here in the puddle? Just wash the spring. Now I hope that this guy right here, this one, this magazine piece, goes nice and flat. Nice, perfect. I love it when things come together. Okay, spring going on inside here. This will solve a lot of your heating issues if you have problems with the grounds hang up. Definitely. Ah, this is magazine piece. And uh, that's about it. I just want to blast out the trigger group one more time. This thing just sitting there soaking, so let's see what that is. Look how it compressed air. So, oh, wait a minute. We're doing seagull. Tell you what, let's hold on to the seagull for now.
the uh, scary moment there. We almost lost this little screw. <laughs> Gotta keep track of everything very carefully. Everything back in here. Uh, where was I? Oh, I was saying time is of the essence to get oil on this stuff because this is a very astringent -y type of cleaner. And uh, it takes all the oil off and rust can start setting in very quickly. So let's get inside out of the cold and continue. All right, so we're back inside. Wow, everything's freezing cold on this tray. All right, now, we want to get into a little bit more in-depth cleaning. Our glass tray, it has served its purpose well. Thank you, glass tray. Let's get a What's on the yellow is visible. Thank you for tuning in to what's on the yellow is visible. Now we need ballastol, got a squirt bottle ballastol, spray bottle ballastol. We obviously trust ballastol corner of this rag let's pick a clean corner we just want to do you know what we'll use this one just a few shots just get some soppy oily goodness going right there right there and then these parts were all totally astringented out the springs you could rotate this way you know you're getting everything it'll just automatically go through coat everything see how it's coming out the other end wet that's what you're looking for when you do this you're sure that you're getting the whole enchilada Spring is good. So yeah, see for all of these parts, you just really want to make sure they've been cleaned good, but this will also help clean any residual stuff that's left. But when you're wiping here, you're leaving behind a nice thin coat of oil to prevent any rust. And then there's gonna be some areas that you can't reach those are definitely the important areas, like here. So we're going to take a patch like this. And... We'll sop it up. And we'll use something like this to push it through. Just to make sure we're getting everywhere. So you don't think you got all the dirt either. Because in these uh, confined spaces, you're definitely going to get a little bit more dirt as well, which is great. Good. 
That was grimy. Where's our corner? Got a little more in our corner. Is that the right corner? Well, I think it was this corner we were using. All right, so now we got two corners. Let's do the bolt. Now the bolt, even more than surface wiping, that's good that the brush worked really good behind the extractor, looks good. I'm still gonna really get it in there good on the bolt. I definitely can be scolded for too much oil, I, I think, but um, don't care. Uh, let's see, extractor, sorry, ejector. Uh, is that ejector screw, I panicked there again for a minute. I thought I lost it before. The little parts, I'm not using my regular little plastic tray and I'm seeing the effects. Usually I go from the glass tray to another little plastic tray. I didn't do that in the garage and the outside garage. Almost lost that piece. It was close. I found it, but it could have vanished. Because uh, I lost track of it for a little bit. The piston. Piston is important. What's important with these pistons is not to score it. This is like the piston bore of a gasoline engine. You know what I mean? You're very careful when you put the rods in that you don't scratch the sides. This looks like that and it needs to look like that. It has to be perfect, like a perfect fit inside of its bore. So uh, we'll be there in a minute, but even the bore needs to be. Uh, cared for. I'll show you where that is. So the other side is what that piston fits in. Let me get another couple of these. These uh, shotgun patches are awesome. I don't think I ever used them for a shotgun. <laughs> They're good for everything. And we're going to get inside here. First I just want to use a dry one just to uh, have a feeling we're going to get some griminess out of here. Not really. Pretty clean. We did a good job with the cleaning. So now I'm gonna sop it up good. And get in there again. Nice. That's what I'm talking about. So yeah, we're not unpinning. This is a, there's a, we could knock a pin out of another roll pin out over here and take this all apart, get inside there and clean out that spring, you know, because we're not really getting to the spring. But I'm confident if we do the sides here good enough that that spring is coming down and getting it, getting oiled good enough for uh, it to be okay. Some of the gas piston action area is on the back of this thing. Clean that out, look like some gas blown look to it. Clean that off and oil it nice. Is that grimy in there? I can't really see. I gotta get a really close look. Yeah, there's some, uh, in here there's some gas, like the crustiness that builds up from the gas operation inside of there. You can again, be really careful with these areas, not to score anything. Now ah, that's nice. See, that was all dirty in there. Nice. The trigger group, we're going to spray. And I'm going to get in here with a patch that's got some lube and the tweezer. And you fish, you're just fishing around for dirt in here. It's finding little spots in and out. You push the patch in and out of little holes. Watch out for little springs. You just want to get in here, wipe, mush around in areas that uh, you might have missed with the brush and the spraying. Just usually it 
gets rid of stuff, but sometimes it just dislodges a lot of the dirt and you have to really get in here with something to actually wipe it off. Put the hammer back, safety on. You don't want to accidentally trip the sear. Even when you're working in here, this thing could slam on your thumb. It could smash, give you a black nail. It could uh, shoot this tweezer right into my eye. It could do a lot, there's a lot of force behind that. You gotta be careful with that, uh, with those uh, hammer, hammer springs and hammer mechanisms. We're cleaning, we're getting in here and cleaning. Pretty good job with the gun scrubber. Uh, it was filthy and uh, there's hardly anything getting on this patch. So we did a good job. Uh, once again, let's give one last go around, make sure we covered anything. We don't want any spot rust bre brewing on any of these areas. This it wouldn't be a normal maintenance oiling, by the way. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going to do this every time I go to the range or something like that. This is just this thing since I have it has never been cleaned. And when you gun scrub it, you kind of, I wouldn't gun scrub it every time I came home. No, this is a, could be a once in a lifetime thing for some of my guns. Uh, other ones that I shoot a lot. It could be that you do it every few seasons or something. So you could wipe off the excess. It's not important. Just that thin film is what's important. And uh, the rest of this, I mean, it'll, uh, it'll kind of like drain out if there's any crazy extra. Now with this... What I'd like to do here is, let's get some room going here. You know, all these parts, again, with that little screw. You know what I'm gonna do with this little screw? I'm gonna send it through. How did it go in again? It went in like that. I'm gonna send it through here, so maybe it'll, that'll hold on to it a little bit more. What I wanna do here is, I wanna get some ballast all in my hands and working with my hands by the way I know you saw me getting the gun scrubber all over my hands uh it's not a good idea it really isn't you should be wearing gloves but I'm not sure how rubber gloves would react to it I don't know the, the way I look at it is the little bit that I do it I shouldn't have to worry but if I was a gunsmith and did this all the time be a little bit more hesitant to get it all over my hands like that every day is what I'm saying but it's not good I should uh, I should practice what I preach but if I were you I wouldn't get it all over my hands like that this ballastol I think it's a little bit safer ballastol is uh well here's the uh, other side of that half moon and we could just pick the little bit of stuff that's right in there out perfect um, ballast oil is supposed to be like, kind of like how mineral oil is, you know, it's supposed to be like non-carcinogenic because it's not like petroleum based or something. It's like, a, like how medicinal oils are, you know? So it's, uh, I don't know what the hell it's made out of, but, uh, I know that's kind of like one of the things that they say. So I'd worry less about the ballastol, but it's probably still not good to uh, inhale fumes and let it soak into your skin. But, uh, you know, Gen Xers, it's really hard to uh, change their ways now, you know? Sorry. Yeah, there's like rails here. You wanna make sure you get into there. That's nice, looking good. We're almost ready for uh, reassembly here. So we can get rid of these patches. We could give this a nice wipe down now. Again, it doesn't have to remain that wet. It's just, uh, see, there's a spot back here. Let's see what this. There's like a hole here that leads through. So this rifle uh, does not have the uh, front sight. 
So uh, just looking online, I did see uh, another guy doing a YouTube video who mentioned that there were different versions of this. And one of the versions had a peep sight that slid in here. Here's the screw. I guess that's the screw that tightens down against it to hold it in place. And that uh, slides into a dovetail here on the side. And that was the uh, peep sight back here. And, uh, you know, obviously it's got the blade front sight. There is no dovetail here, even for the uh, that flip-up sight. So uh, it's just not even available. And then a little bit more research showed that the ones that had the rotary magazine were called deer fields or something like that. And they have a, like a totally different action. It almost has like an M1 carbine looking, like M1 Garand rotating bolt out of the top. You know what I mean? That kind of look to it. So that's like a completely different gun, basically. So that was the story with that. Touching up the history. It's amazing what one extra day will teach you. But uh, yeah, you know, the live chats with Gun, Gun Geek are fun. I like uh, sitting on, sitting in on those. It's, uh, it's interesting to just uh, talk with these guys. You've been watching their videos and kind of part of the same community it's nice to just be able to sit and talk about just anything you know just rap just bullshit about whatever so uh that's it we're going to check out this gas area now where the gas comes in over here now this is an interesting spot because what we're going to do is we're going to take a brand new patch we're going to use an old one going in there one that's already got lube on it or whatever no we want to go in here clean and we want to try to just use wood um i went in here with the brush before but you do have to be careful you see this metal on the tip of this brush so i put a patch over it and went in there um but now for now i'm going to try to just get a little oil on here and all i really want to do is just mush this up in there so it's all that's all I want to do. I want to just get in there and just turn this and get oil all in there. See, that's what I want to get off. I just want to get in here and get that burnt up. This is more like, you know, burnt up stuff, like singed. This is like what the bell of a, of a uh, rocket launcher thing would look like after the launch just filled with crusty burnt up stuff you can't just clean that off with like uh you know you almost need like it's like oven stuff like you have to have special stuff like easy off to get that out there's a good uh idea right there if you had uh, a really crusted up gas system that somebody didn't take care of for many years and it was badly crusted up maybe easy off would be good to get rid of that crap you couldn't get rid of but i'm convinced that that right there made it look mint in there as good as it's gonna get it wasn't bad or anything i'm not saying it was bad it was actually very good condition but uh that's how we're gonna leave it ladies and gentlemen so let's get busy with this uh reassembly here how's that bolt looking in that bolt Take a close look at this bolt. We still have our KO here. Where our battery is good. Let's plug us in, huh? Nice. There we go. We're plugged in. We're good for hours now. Hours. We could stay here forever. Yeah, Gun Geek huh? I was like, yeah, you see the uh, Winchester Model 100 video I did? And I was going to mention something about it. He goes, yeah, I started that. <laughs> Who can freaking watch a video that long? I don't blame him. So this goes in, how did we figure again? Like that. Just want to just get a little, just a little extra in here. And here. Nice. All right, that's what we want to see. Extractor looks good. Let's get a little behind the extractor. See, that's why it pays to squirt it with the bolt. 
Remember, you blasted this out with gun scrubber. Even the little nicks and crannies, there's no oil in here. And behind that extractor, there was a spring. There was not oil back there. All right, I'm confident it's good. We drop it in like this, right? Wasn't it right here that it goes in? And then it rotated up, right? Yep, that's it. Now, let's just get behind here, a little oil behind here, just to make sure it's coated nice back there. Let's get this guy in. Is that where it goes? seem to line up properly. That's how it was in there. Some nice oil on this screw. How could that be possible? So weird. It doesn't seem like it's at the same angle anymore. Oh, there we go. With the bolt out of the way, it's better. There we go. That's the spot. See, if it doesn't look right, if something doesn't look right, you got all the time in the world, even with me feeling like I got pressure with you guys here. I'm still not going to compromise that patient and time taken, patience and time taken to make sure it's right. Very important. rotate up this will still rotate up oh that's why I see it gets like kind of like jammed in there when the uh, when the uh, ejectors in there This one's a little on the snug side, so I want to really give it a good snugging. All right, so far so good. Let's see, what now? Let's uh, lube this guy up. Put them in here. Definitely went that way, right? Okay, one thing I just want to cut in here quick. I did put it together wrong. You couldn't really see what I did. Because when I put in the gas piston, you couldn't really see how I was configuring it. But there's a flat side and this tapered side. This tapered side needs to be facing towards the magazine tube because it fits into a recess right there. See that? I'm just going to shake it. There. See how it fits in there when it was the, just the flat side without this cut taken out of it. It wasn't fitting inside there exactly like that. So that's how I figured out exactly which way it is supposed to go. But that's the problem. See when something just falls out of somewhere quick and you don't get to see where it goes. That would have been a uh, that would have been an issue. Might have still functioned, but it would have beaten that up. But it would have eventually failed. It would not have been working correctly. So uh, make sure you get that right. Uh, what else we got? We got this, 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 the spring and the pin. All right. 
So let's see. This guy. This guy went in here. slot definitely went in there. Bolt handle. Handle would face this way, I guess. There we go. Like that. Now this guy. This guy went in with that round part facing down. And it kind of fit in. It looks like it should fit into like a keyway there. I know I don't see anything there, but I don't feel anything, but it definitely did. Yeah, and that's how it that's how it fits behind there. It definitely has to go. It definitely has to go past something right here to fit into that. If I lift this a little, it'll be easier. All right, definitely has to get past this lip, I think. And if I look in there, what do I see? Let's take a look. Oh, no, no, that's on the top. I was mistaken. So it goes like this. And I'm trying to fit it the other way. It won't go. I know it's like the recess is on the top, it looks like. Possibly. Not 100% sure yet. Let me see. Go around in a circle and see where it fits in. Nowhere. It doesn't fit in anywhere. Huh. It has that line through it and the crescent. Let me take another look. What do I see in here? It does look like, uh, it does look like it just goes like this, with it facing down. Like, I'm pretty sure when I pulled it out, that was the direction it was facing. Well, let's see. Pull it out a little bit. I can see, well, this fits. This goes in there like that. Now it's in there. Oh, and I could, there you go. And I could just push all of this down. But then that's where it fits. It doesn't go into that other spot. It fits in there like that. Oh, did it sit down? Oh, it sat down inside of there. See? Nice. That's where it goes. Well, why isn't 
the bolt moving. I'm a little worried that the bolt's not moving when I pull this back. It's not, it's like, it seems kind of like it's locked. Oh, there we go. All right. This wasn't down all the way. Now, oh, sorry, am I off camera? Now it looks like that's the proper operation right there. Let's get a little uh, lube right on that action right there. I'm not going to be able to reach that once it's all buttoned up, I guess. Now we got to keep it exactly like this, but get this spring over here. Spring all the way in. Well, you can do it. Once you get, once the springs enter into the equation, you're ready to go crazy. Now let's get the trigger group ready and orientated because once we get that in, this is next. Let me clean this this edge right here. Looks like it's real important as far as. Everything fitting nice and smooth and flush. Clean that out really good. All right, we're good. So that's going to fit like this. So let's put it right there like that, ready to go. Let's get this spring all the way over now. We do it one coil at a time. It's not uh, the stiffest spring, but it's not the, it's not the knot stiffest spring either <laughs> so let's see can we lift this a little just to get some room yeah we can lift it a little there we go come on a few more it's binding right there all right let's see we gotta get some room here so we could lift this up like that just to get it on, right? And then push it down and in. There we go. Nice. We did it. Right? Yeah, we did it. It's all in. It's all on there. Now this, remember, it was like in and back. Remember, we did this. In and back, sort of, kind of, like that. Is that it? Hold this all together. That pin hole, that pin's not lining up, say it. We did this. We messed with it. not lining up and the hammer is back right yep okay let's take a look and make sure oh there we go that wasn't in all the way it should be good now it should be good now it's not good now why is this part not going in here this part's not going in all right let's see i can't see that that's lined up that's where it's, oh, you heard that? That was it right there. Yep. Let's get this pin in. Where's the pin? Oh, I didn't have the pin ready. Where the hell did that pin go? Oh my God. What an idiot. Of course not. Come on, guy. This, I'm looking right through it. Here it is. It's right there. I'm looking right through it. What's the problem? There we go. <sighs> we did it. Wipe it down. Wipe it all down. Do some a couple of function tests. Bolt hold open works. Release works. Trigger works. 
Hammer falls. We're good. All right. Now, again, we don't want a tremendous amount of oil all around the outside. It's going to do nothing but soak into the wood. So that coating is good enough, but we definitely want to make sure at this point we clean it really good because we touched everything and we got our finger oils on everything that's going to be covered up, especially the barrel. See if you could get like, get something like this where you see a gap like that, right? See if you could push the rag through the gap. Like that, get the other side of it so you can even really clean good inside there. See that? Get really good in there where you touched it. A lot of times at this stage, I put on the gloves. Let's just do it. So now we're clean and we gotta touch it again, but we wanna. I'm going to touch it. I got some gloves here. Let's see what we got here. We want to touch it and not get our finger oils all over it again. So we got our gloves. Okay. Ha, ah, we can touch it. Let's just do a oil across that spring over here. Let that kind of soak in. It's the one spot I want a little bit of extra lube. Let's get our stock. Boom, here it is. Let's put it this way. Now remember we had to have our action open, remember? I didn't forget that. I know you thought I was gonna forget. You know what, uh, the back of the stock right here, that's just a little, I just wanna get in there. It is a little dirty. Let's just get in there. Clean that up. You still need to do all of this and not clean back there. Let me see. What does it look like? What does it look like? Looking good. No, we're not taking this rag with us. Come on, man. We're not eating the rag. Get off the rag. There we go. Nice. The barrel band did go on this way. Clean that off a little bit over here. Slip it on. I love the fact that this is the screw that holds the whole rifle together. I love that. And, uh, you know, treat it as such and use the proper bit. So with this, you could snug it down a bit. It has a mechanism here. You could take these gloves off. So I'm not slipping on the screwdriver. It has a mechanism here that uh, allows you to tighten this, but still leave the swivel loose. So get in there kind of good. A little stiff, you know what I mean? Right, uh, let's even it out. I don't like it not even. Just a little bit more. Make it flat. There we go. Nice. And the scope mount, right? Mm 
Let me try to get it exactly where it was. It was right there. I don't see how that would be off by that much. We'll just finger tighten them and make them nice and even. And then get our bit back out. Let's make sure it's in on both sides properly. It is. Now we'll do a little even eye. We'll give it a little torque there, a little torque here, a little torque here, back and forth. Try as much as we can to settle it in nice exactly to where it was. Remember exactly how tight it was. About that tight, I'd say. And this one was about, about that tight, I would say. Let's get this off. Let's just do a nice wipe down here. Don't touch the lens with this, because remember, it is oily. We just want to do a nice wipe down with the one that had the oil on it. And then the one that did This is how I would, uh, you know, give it back to a customer, let's say. And one last all over cleanup for you guys. And there we go. So that's it. That's the uh, taking apart, cleaning, and reassembling of the Ruger Model 44 Carbine. It's a little function test here with realistic snap caps. Uh, realistic snap caps. You know, the holiday season is coming to a close. So you couldn't get any of these in time watching this video for your significant other <laughs> hey honey i got you some realistic snap caps forget about that bracelet you wanted check these out but listen make a uh, make a christmas gift for yourself it's uh, realisticsnapcaps.com check out all the different calibers they have they got a ton of them rifle pistol uh, they're so fun to play with. They really are. And, uh, the fact that they're totally inert means you can, uh, you know, do drills like this. Did the firing pin contact that, um, sufficiently? Let's take a look. Let's zoom on in and take a look. I'd say, yeah, that's a nice strong firing pin hit. Ooh, look how nice and oily it is. <laughs> it's where everyone's supposed to chime in and go, look at how freaking... How much freaking oil he put it's all over the road it would have blown up well definitely gonna you know go through and wipe off any other residual oil but i think it's important to make sure that it's on everything but um yeah this is uh this is what you're using these things for look i'm not i'm not lying i don't think this one has a see it it, it rebounds it comes back like here let's pull one out Didn't do that hard enough but whoa, let's pull one out. See, there's no uh, no firing pin hit on there that's really, I mean, a little. You can see there's like a residual one from doing it before. But if you want to test it now, let's say, look at the difference now. And uh, that it just got hit. See it? How nice and strong that is. And you could tell, are you hitting the primer strong enough to set them off? I would say, yeah. So these things are tools. You play with them. There's all kinds of things you could do with them. Oh, realisticsnapcaps.com. Listen to this. 10% off if you use coupon code Millsurp Garage. Don't tell anybody I told you that. M-I-L-S-U-R-P-G-A-R-E-G-E -E is the coupon code. These guys do not pay me. I just love their product. And that's the truth. I know. I mean, come on. Look at the amount of subscribers this channel has. Do you think somebody's sponsoring me? It's like a sponsor. I love them. They love me. And uh, off into the sunset we will go. So, 
Hope you guys enjoyed this. We got a couple more in here. Bang. Ooh, that one was nice. Man, this thing, it's definitely functioning. It's extracting even stronger. But, uh, yeah, 44 special. Let's take a look, huh? We got some time. We've been here for, what, a couple of hours? We could spend a little bit more time. Let's take a look. I don't know, is this rifle, uh, geared up for 44 special? Here's our 44 special, uh, snap caps. You know, I was thinking, you could do, like, uh, you could do something weird with this rifle. If you, to load that first round, it's weird. It's almost like the A5. You wish you could put this in, and it would bring it into, it would bring it into the, uh, doesn't do that doesn't do that but it will close I'll put the first one in it cycles on fine huh I'm pretty sure you could use 44 special it liked them it liked it hey Mikey the Ruger 44 carbine get in there find one of these I see him at like every third gun show. I see one. But this one, I did want one for a while. And when I saw this one, I think this is a 63. Uh, so it's an early one. And uh, I did. I fell in love with it. It, uh, you know, same thing as the 100, Model 100, the Winchester Model 100. It came with the sling, came with the scope. It was like a whole package. I uh, might have paid a little bit more for it, but uh, definitely worth it. I would have paid more for a sling and a scope, of three times as much extra. So, um, And then plus the gun was in beautiful shape. So that's the word. I'm looking for uh, one of these, by the way, so that if I ever wanted to take the scope off, I have the peep sight. Uh, I can't find one anywhere. If anybody could uh, give me a heads up uh, in the description if you know where to get one of those, that would be great. And Merry Christmas, everybody. That is definitely it for me. We are out with the Ruger Model 44 Carbine. See you. Uh, no, I'm going to do another video before the end of the year. I think I'm going to do another video later. I got something cool to show you guys. And, uh, and then that'll be it. See you later. Yes, yeah, <laughs>